Welcome to Bringing the Word to You. I am your host, Minister Tim Greco, coming out of Omaha, Nebraska. I know how hard and difficult it is for some of you to get to church and Bible study, so I want to go ahead and bring the word to you. You know, God is a good God. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. All thanks to my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the opportunity to teach his word, thanking him for taking me where I once was to where he has brought me to today. You know, I want to thank you guys so much for your ongoing love, prayers, support, and contributions to the ministry. And before we get started on this powerful message the Lord has just for you, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we just want to thank you again, Lord, for another day, another opportunity to lift up your name. Lord, we thank you for television. We thank you for radio, Lord. We thank you for all the resources you have given us, Lord, to share the gospel, Lord, to give people an opportunity to come to salvation, Lord, that we preach repentance and to give everybody a hope in you that will not fail them. Lord, please empty me of myself, fill me with your Holy Spirit, speak to your people the way that you want to speak to them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, it's amazing what God can do through somebody. You know, we were all born in the sin-filled, corrupted world, and it's amazing how God is calling everybody to salvation. Are we so caught up in the world and worldly things and worldly places that we're not even aware of God calling us to salvation? If we take some quiet time out, no matter what it is you're going through, no matter what it is you're dealing with, no matter what struggles you might have, no matter what shame, no matter what guilt, no matter what you might be feeling today, just go to a quiet place and start talking to the Lord. The Bible says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is your day to answer to the call of salvation. It takes faith to answer to the call of salvation. It takes faith to be saved. Without faith, we cannot please God. But it is ultimately because of God's grace. God offers salvation as a gift because of his grace. God has given you faith to answer to the call of salvation because of his grace. God is loving. He is merciful. He is forgiving. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've been through, God will forgive you of your sins today, right now. You know, for a long time, it was hard to believe that God would forgive me of anything that I've done wrong because a lot of people think that preachers or pastors or evangelists or men or women of God are goody two shoes and they were fed with a silver spoon and they were born to be goody too. No, no, no. See, I know Jesus because of the hard things that I've been through in life. I know Jesus because of the drug and alcohol addiction. I know Jesus because of being out there in the world at a young age. I know Jesus because of being neglected, abandoned, rejected throughout life. I know Jesus because being a father at the age of 16. I know Jesus because I've been to jail five different times in three different states. I know Jesus because. And so you go back and look at everything you've been through. The Lord has been trying to get your attention for a long time. You know, I'll paraphrase in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. Paul said that, that he was the worst of sinners. When it was too hard for me to believe that God would save somebody like me, I looked up that scripture and it's in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. And the reason I know that is because Timothy is my name. 115 is my birthday. So God was weighing on my heart, Tim. If I saved Paul, I can save you. And today he's telling you, if he can save Paul, if he can save me, he can save you. It doesn't matter what you've done. God will forgive you right now. See, God will give you more than what you can handle in life. People get it wrong where God won't give you more of a temptation than what you can handle. He'll always show you a way out of a temptation. You are never forced to fall into a temptation, 
for it is called a temptation for a reason. You have a choice to fall into it or get out. The Lord will show you a way out and he'll give you the strength to take out. But as far as everyday life, sometimes everyday life is more than what we can handle because that heaviness is that is on your back, that heaviness that is on your shoulders, God is trying to just, he, when, that, when that weighs you down, that should bring you right down to your knees, crying out to him saying, Lord, I can't take this no more. Lord, I can't deal with this. I can't do this. You know, it feels so good to go to a lonely place and spend time with the Lord. And that's one of the reasons I have this picture up here today because I was able to go to a lonely place at one point on the beach and write the name of Jesus in the sand. But I was able to spend time with the Lord. You know, I was walking on the beach one day and I saw my footprints in the sand and it reminded me of the footprints of Jesus because he's carrying me through life. You might see only one set of footprints in the sand, but that's the footprints of Jesus because he's carrying you. He loves you. Let's jump right into scripture here in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27. The word of God reads, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. You know, let's go back up here to Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, are you seeking after the Lord? Do you want to better yourself? Do you want to change your life around? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you sick and tired of going to the same places around the same people, doing the same things, falling into the same sin? The word says, whoever hears these sayings of mine, today you are hearing the word of God. But just hearing it isn't enough. The word of God sounds so good, it, 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 it hears so good, it, it feels so good, it makes us feel good, but we can deceive ourselves if we stop right there because we are to be doers of the word. I can tell you to go out there and love, 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 love all I want to. It sounds good. It makes you feel good, but are you doing it? I could tell you to go out there and come to salvation and repent, call upon the name of the Lord. It sounds good, but are you doing it? Are we just hearers of the word or are we doers of the word also? Because the Lord will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. When you build your house on a rock, let's take a physical house, a real house. When construction starts, they don't go building it on a muddy hill where everything's going to slide down. They don't go building it up on a hilltop by the cliff. So when the wind blows or it rains, the house slides down the cliff. I mean, there are houses by some cliffs, but they were built in a way strategically built on a solid foundation. It might look like it's by a cliff, but it's far enough to be on a solid foundation. Your life might seem like it's by a cliff right now. But God wants to come in and build it on a solid foundation. When it rains, the house still stands. When the floods come, the house still stands. When the wind blows and beats on the house, it will not fall for your life will be built on a solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Before my relationship with Jesus, the wind was blowing in my life and I fell over many times. The rain was raining down in my life several times and I, I got really wet in the storms. And I was 
focus on the waves and the winds and it beating against my house. And what the enemy will do is he'll allow things to go so good in your life for a while and to get up here because he knows when the wind starts blowing and the waves start coming and the storms start coming and your house is built on that sandy foundation of him that you'll crash. And he knows that. Sometimes some days are going good, some weeks are going good, some months are going good, and then all of a sudden, boom! What is your life being built on today? But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. What are you building your house on today? When I was walking on this beach one day, I was walking and I said, man, this would be the, the, the goofiest place to build a house on, on sand. The waves, of the, the waves of the water would come in and just knock over the home and the, the wind from being off on the beach would, would blow in and blow my house over. I need to build it on a solid foundation. That's why I wrote the name of Jesus right here in the sand because Jesus should be the solid foundation of our lives. He wants to come into your life today. He wants to touch you, heal you, anoint you, fill you with his Holy Spirit. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and great was its fall. Some days are going good. Some weeks are going good. Some months are going good, and then all of a sudden, boom, because the enemy wants to see you fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See, Jesus separates himself from us because he's fully God where he doesn't have to repent, but he's fully man where he had to pray. But he separates himself with us because he had such power and such authority. And without having Jesus living on the inside of us, we don't have that power or that authority. But when you come to salvation and you receive the Holy Spirit, you have that power and that authority that lives on the inside of you. You can start teaching with authority. You can start teaching with anointing. You know, for a while I was trying to teach on my own and... I got so scared. I said, Lord, you're calling the wrong one into ministry. And who are we to tell God who the right and wrong ones are to call into ministry? When God called Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses had a stuttering problem. He used what Moses thought was one of his weaknesses as actually one of his strengths because he had full reliance on God. When I was in school, when I was in high school, junior high school, high school, and I had to speak, I wouldn't do it. Because I remember the first time I was up there in front of my class and I was like this. And I was so scared and so embarrassed that I, was, I said, I'm never doing this again. I would skip school if I had to speak in front of the class. I would do whatever it took to not speak in front of the class. So when God called me into ministry, to preach and teach his word as we do at the jail facilities, the nursing homes, the hospitals, street ministry. I said, Lord, you got the wrong one. I'll paraphrase. He said, don't tell me that I picked the wrong one. I made you. I formed you. I know you. You might not be able to do it on your own strength, you might have skipped school in junior high and high school when it came time to speak in. But when you have full reliance on me, just like when Moses had full reliance on me, he was able to do it and you're going to be able to do it. And here I am by the grace of God. Nothing but a dirty, filthy rag compared to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 to 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 11 to 15, the word of God reads, for no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is in Jesus Christ. 
Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold and silver and precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Come back with me in 1 Corinthians 3, let's go to verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid in Jesus Christ. If you're trying to build a foundation that's not in Jesus, you're building it on a sandy foundation. And before you even get up to that second or third level, floor, whatever, it's going to fall. The stresses of life, the, the, the worries, the fears, the anxieties, the responsibilities, the expectations, the roles we play as a father, as a brother, as a preacher, you women as a mother, as a sister, you know, it, it needs to be built on Jesus. If it's not built on Jesus, then you're trying to build it on materialistic things. You're trying to build it on the things of this world. Going to worldly places with worldly people and doing worldly things, it's not going to last very long. And those of you who are have lived that life like I have, and those of you who are still living that life, you guys can admit right now, there's a darkness to it. There's an emptiness to it. There's a boredom to it. There's, there's got to be something more to life to it. And we all know that. I went down every avenue life had to offer, and every avenue led me right back to Jesus. We were all born with this, with this void on the inside of us. And when we hit that age of accountability, we're going to be responsible for where it is we spend eternity. God's not going to send a child that, that, that isn't accountable yet for his actions to hell. But there's an age of accountability that differs from everybody. You know, it, it, we all think differently. We all were born differently. Some of us have disabilities, which I don't even like to use that word because everything God made is good. But, you know, I might have been held accountable maybe starting at the age of 14. I don't know. I'll throw that age out there. You know, I was starting to be held accountable about 13 to 15, I would say. Some could be held accountable around 10. Some have some mental disabilities where, you know, somebody might be 50 or 60 years old, but still kind of have the mind of a 10-year-old and have yet to be held accountable, if that makes sense. But everybody's different. But when you hit that age of accountability, when you know you're rejecting Jesus and living for the enemy, that's when... God doesn't send us to hell. We send ourselves on choosing to reject Jesus. You send yourself to heaven. God sends us to heaven when we become born again and receive the Holy Spirit. But are you building your life on gold, silver, stones, wood, hay, straw? Because when the fire of life comes and all that stuff is burned up, who are you? What are you about? What is your purpose? What do you do in everyday life? See, the storms and the trials and tribulations in life can come and, and burn things up in my life, but it can't burn Jesus. It can't burn the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. The Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. When you start to go to God first on where to work, Nobody's going to steal that job from you. When you start going to God first on who to be friends with, nobody's going to steal those friends from you. When you start going to God first about your income and what you do every day before your feet even hit the ground, for God to coordinate your day, having it go the way that he wants it to go, nobody's going to steal that, that, that joy and that peace from you in that day. When I woke up today and I started my day off with the Lord and I said, Lord, please coordinate my day today, Lord. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything if it's not of you. I only want to be of you. I only want to say what you want me to say. 
I only want you to do what you want me to do. And here we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, you know, the enemy's going to try to use people to sow discord, to gossip about you, to say or do me negative things to you or about you. You know, that's just the enemy coming to attack you. So you got to be one step ahead and already know that the enemy's coming to kill, steal, and destroy, but that Jesus has come to give life and to give it more abundantly. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 to 17. The word of God reads, But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them, all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. When you give your life to the Lord, it's not all, what do they say, peaches and cream or whatever. It's not, that's when the battle begins. That's when the enemy says, oh boy, they're born again. They're on that, they're on that narrow path that leads to life. They're on their way to heaven. I got to start messing with them. I got to start persecuting them. That's when the battle begins. That's when you got to start being a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. That's when you got to pray. That's when we got to repent. That's when we got to ask. That's when we got to seek. That's when we got to knock. That's when we got to persevere. That's when we got to daily pick up our cross and follow after the Lord. That's when we got to be a doer of the word. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Oh, there are many preachers out there today coming to tickle your ears. They're coming to tell you that you can do whatever you want when you're saved and you don't have to answer to conviction and you don't have to repent and you don't have to forgive. I mean, I don't know what Bible they're reading. But when we get saved and receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to convict us with the thought of sin. And when we sin, for we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, we must repent. People are preaching out there today that you can go do whatever you want to do. Well, then what's the point of repentance? What's the point of persevering? What's the point of asking? What's the point of seeking? What's the point of knocking? I don't preach that feel good, tickle your ear message here in this ministry where we have a responsibility. It's not by works we're saved, but you should want to do right. You should want to be obedient. You should want to repent. When you slip up, you should want to be open and honest and transparent about who you are and the struggles that you might encounter. You know, the first step in getting help is admitting you need help. For so many years of my life, I was in denial. And so I, one day I said, you know what, Lord, I can't do this by myself. I need you. He healed me, delivered me and set me free and gave me purpose and identity. And he wants to do the same for you. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The only reason that I am thoroughly equipped to do what God has called me to do is because he has taught me his word. He has given me his Holy Spirit. He's been graceful, merciful to me. He has forgiven me of my sins. He forgives me when I repent. He has corrected me. He has given me instruction. He leads me and guides me and directs me. God is powerful. And we're going to close out with 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 to 26. The word of God reads, Remind them of these things. 
charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hominius and Philetus are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. And we'll close out with this. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. With those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. If nobody told you they love you today, I love you, God loves you, and I pray you have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, let's go.